so yes definitely man yeah you've definitely been a huge like like kind of like a mythological shred creature to me (laughs) my whole life like you know like yeah i remember like hearing you know when epitaph came out uh before it came out the the you guys released uh stab wound and seven i think and i remember it was like only streaming back then in 2003 it was was only like it was before the youtube and band camp days i think exactly or something but not not even i think it was 2004 there wasn't even youtube back in the day Remember. Totally. Yes, and we had, I had the, to, we had the songs on the website or something like that. Really yeah, awesome. I had to take it out of my sound card and go through a mixer to a CD uh-huh. burner to get it on a CD. Like I remember, like <laughs> I had to go through a big oh, process really? just to get it so I could listen to it. But yeah, no, that it's was crazy, obviously. Man. This you know, year, it's been like twenty years that I joined Necrophages. Like it was in May two thousand two. <laughs> it's crazy how time yeah. flies. And next year it's going to be twenty years that we recorded this album. God, it really doesn't like, seem like yeah. all that was that long ago, you know? Yeah. Does not seem like 20 years at all. But, yeah. Well, you've been entertaining the shit out of us or for us or whatever. Just <laughs> you've been creating insane yeah. music for us for years, dude. It's like, what a, a Christian plays on this? Like, what? He played? Oh, yeah. Then he fucking, yeah. We God haven't even damn, touched dude. on, uh, I mean, like, when, when, uh, for, yeah. like, exactly what Casey's talking about. Like, we haven't even touched on, because, you know, growing up, you know, it was Necrophages, Spawn of Possessions were my, were my two favorite bands. Like, yeah. that was like, yeah. So like spawn obsession was 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 it for me that was like yeah. i mean necrophages those those two those tickled my tick my technical tickle bone i don't know by the but, way uh, dennis was going to come on tonight but he couldn't make it but he was ah, that's such a shame man i haven't i haven't uh, yeah. yeah i know we're gonna try yeah. to sneak I, dennis I, on i once played a um once played a telephone trick on him but he, i think he doesn't know it was me <laughs> <Not really. laughs> it's like uh, a friend of I mine hear, i want to hear a story we had this like fart app you know which was making these weird fart noises on the, on the <laughs> yeah. and yeah, we were like yeah. hey Let's just call up some people, you know, and call the white people. Some people got really angry, <laughs> and some people just hung up. Like, like my boss at my music school, he was just listening and not saying anything, and just listening to the parts. <laughs> like, all the parts. It was also <laughs> by Dennis, and I think Dennis doesn't know it was me because I called with his oppressed number. And and Dennis <laughs> actually, he was out. He was at some restaurant with, I think, with his wife and some friends. <laughs> he was, and, and he was laughing his ass off. And then he was yes. like, "Hey, okay. gotta check it out." Because he has, he has the kind of humor. He's that he's that type of guy. So that's awesome, been, man. Would have been cool. So yeah. you know, if he sees this episode, then he finally knows that it was me. And how much of uh, Epitaph? We actually have a question in here that was someone who actually kind of relates to it. But he wants huh? to know uh, what riffs on Epitaph were both you and I mean, which ones were you? Which ones? Because you did the last song, right? I know I've always heard that. Yeah, you did the last the thing. Song, we, right? we both we both play rhythm guitar on the album, so we both each recorded their own individual side, but only on five tracks because there's three tracks which Muhammad recorded alone, uh, okay. and five tracks where we both. Uh, and oddly enough, one of the tracks he recorded alone is the only track which I co-wrote, <laughs> which is symbiotic in theory, which is funny. Um, oh, shit. It had to do with my university schedule and things back then, you know, and and uh, but but like and but I, of course obviously I play my solos and all of the tunes. Um, but written, I wrote like the first the riffs in the first one and a half minutes or so of Symbiotic in Theory. That's basically the riffs that I wrote for this album. All the other riffs were Muhammad's riffs on that record, so he wrote like 99 percent of the album. Uh, I wrote my solos obviously, but I had some help from Muhammad because I was still very young back then. I would used to I would I would overplay, you know, I would cluster everything with with, with fast runs and patches, and sometimes he would say, "Hey, let a note ring a little bit more here," and he had some better rhythmic ideas at times. And I wrote some of the bass lines actually, so like some of the tapping stuff that the bass is doing in Step Wound, I actually wrote that, and awesome. some of the fills. So that that's what some a lot of people don't know, but some of these bass ideas are actually mine on the record. Yeah. Very cool, very cool. So the so solos, you, you did you pretty much because there's pretty much like battle solos in every song, right? You guys yeah, are going back and almost. forth. Like every song. Yeah, it's like almost. so on, on seven and the title track only I play solo, and on Ignominos and Pale and Diminished to be only Mohammed plays solo. Okay. And all the other ones we both have leads and the straight offs and things like that. There's a battle section in like uh, only Ash Remains. Definitely. It's like two two, and. Uh, yeah, so there's there's trade-offs basically on on all of the other ones. And there's a lot of questions too. I know that me and Casey probably have about the recording because the recording mm-hmm. to us is like one of our favorite recordings, and mm-hmm. just sounds so. I mean, it's probably I'm not sure exactly. Would you guys use Engel amps or something? Right? Yes, it was Engel amps, and we used. Um, but there was no reamping back then, right? So we really yeah, yeah. And, and the thing was, uh, we didn't want to pay studio time. I mean, the advance money wasn't wasn't crazy a crazy summer or anything like that. So we went to the uh, the basement of a school in Baden-Baden, the, the 
place and Ronald lived and he kind of rented a basement and, and rebuilt this into a, like a little bit of a studio, right? But so we had like the cabinet set up mm -hmm. and and we microphoned them and the reverb that you hear on the lead is actually the actual reverb from the angle amp from the tube record uh, that we, I don't remember what it was named, tube record 860, I think. This is the, the amp that you hear in both of the Necrophages albums. And uh, yeah, so the reverb that you hear wasn't added later on in the leads. It was really the actual reverb from the amp. And we had the, the microphone set up and man, it was a, it was in the basement of a school and it was wet and dark and was really not comfortable. That's why we called this, what was it called? Depths of torment or something like that, because it was really like <laughs> nightmarish to, to, to be there and, and record the guitars and it was cold and not nice at all. And it was shitty weather. I remember it was raining all the time. And uh, crazy. So we were doing that and we had the amp set up in the control room, which what was the control room, right? Yeah. And, um, <laughs> And yeah, so it wasn't like nowadays we would just record the eye signals and then re -amp. So you really had to dial in the tone and be like, hey, is that the tone you want the album? Yeah, and Mohamed was really good with it. He had really good ears. And one day, his sister came to visit with, with her little daughter, who was like two or three years old, and she was just learning to walk. And she went to the amps. Oh, what's that? And, and almost started to do the knobs, you know, and Mohamed went, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> so but, well, while we were already like in the middle of the recording project. Party fell. Oh, no. <laughs> a couple of the tracks. So yeah, so this was the angle tube record 860. And I think, I don't remember what cabinet those were, but I think it was, was an angle cabinet as well. Uh, a microphone, like really the old school way. Do you guys take pictures of your, your settings in case some shit like that happens? No, but it would be a good idea, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I mean, then you make an album and you don't even remember how to, I mean, even when, when even nowadays when I make a record and let's say Hannes is reamping the stuff in his studio, and later I'm like, man, that was a really good guitar tone. How did we do that? And of course, no one thought about like taking a photo of the setting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah I guess. <laughs> do you still stick by like um on the road and stuff? Are you um purely using tube head amps or yeah, using... yeah, well, in Obscura, we still like on the American run that we just finished, we're still using our our angle heads, like a, a preamp and a power amp, actually. But I don't know, it's, it's, it's really heavy stuff. It's logistically difficult, you know? I mean, it sounds a little bit better, but live, I mean, sometimes you're happy if you can hear the guitar at all. And I, I just think the camper stuff is more convenient. I mean, in my studio, I record with an XFX, which I use as interface, and I record to the eye signal, and then obviously re amp this to real amps on the, on the New Obscura album, on the last Eternity's end record on the Alphard albums. That's, that's what we do. Um, but for recording at home, it's just super convenient, right? Because I can record with my headphones at three in the morning and stuff like that. We couldn't do that back in the day. Um, yeah. And for life, for convenience reasons, I think that the camper stuff really, really sounds good. And you never have any problems. You can take it on the plane easily, you know, in your hand luggage and stuff like that. And this is where I'm just more like pragmatic with that kind yeah. of stuff. You know, I'm not, not much of a purist when it comes to that. Of course, in the studio nowadays, with reamping, it's perfect. I mean, you can take all the time in the world to dial in the guitar tones that you want. You can try different amp models and stuff like that. But back then, when we did every time, it was like we have to figure out the sound before. Tell if we can live with that if we're happy with that and then that's going to be the sound on the album right that's basically what it was back then jeez man well he did a good job <laughs> dialing that in that's still yeah, like it, it, it took uh... long enough <laughs>